All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, the chair of this committee. I would like to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee and are present today. We have Councilmember Rivera Gibson Richards Ku uh, Diaz, uh, Chair Moya, uh, Ayala, Reynoso, and Miller. I want to thank uh, Chair Moya and Chair Adams for their work on our two subcommittees. Today we will vote to approve LU 618 through 622, five individual landmarks designations in Speaker Johnson's district. There are five historic row houses located at 47, 49, 51, 53, and 55 West 28th Street in the former Tin Pan Alley neighborhood of Manhattan. We will vote to approve LU 616, an application submitted by the Department of Housing and Preservation and Development to facilitate the disposition and renovation of one city-owned six-story building located at 272 East 7th Street in Manhattan in Councilmember Rivera's district. The application requests the approval of an urban development action area project pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and an exemption from real property tax pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. We will vote to approve LU 617, an application by the New York City Health and Hospital Corporation requesting approval to lease approximately 24,080 square feet of land and 20,000 square foot administration building on New York City Housing and Hospital Sea View Campus in Councilmember Matthews District in Staten Island. This approval will facilitate a 30-year lease with a 19-year renewal option to Camela of Staten Island, Inc. to operate a women's residential substance use disorder program. We will vote to approve the OU623 in application for the rescission of the landmark designation of the former PS31 building located at 425 Grand Concourse in the Bronx in my district. The building, the building was demolished in 2013 pursuant to an emergency declaration by the Department of Buildings because of structural problems and damages caused by Hurricane Sandy. The rescission will facilitate the construction of a new mixed-use development. We will also vote to approve LU 640 related to the Cooper Square MHA Phase 1 for property in districts of council members Chin and Rivera in Manhattan. This application submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law requests approval, approval of an amendment to Council Resolution Number 819 approved on March 28, 2019 to also exempt the community facility space in the exemption area. From our zoning subcommittees, we will vote to approve LU 630 for the 8118 13th Avenue rezoning proposal. The proposed zoning map amendment will facilitate the, le the legalization of office use at the site by establishing a C1-3 commercial overlay in a R5B district in the Diker Heights neighborhood of Brooklyn in Councilmember Brandon's district. We will vote to approve the modifications of OU 627 for 271 Seabreeze Avenue in Councilmember Deutsch district. The application sought approval for a zoning map amendment to establish a C2-4 overlay district within R6 district in the West Brightman neighborhood of Brooklyn to allow for commercial use in a new mixed-use development. Our modification will reduce the area of the proposed overlay district to better reflect the portions of the zoning area appropriate for commercial zoning. We will also vote to approve the modifications LU 631 for the Queens Boulevard MIH tax amendment relating to property in Councilmember Holden's district and Van, and Van Bramer's district in the math past Woodside neighborhoods of Queens. The application saw approval of a zoning tax amendment to establish two mandatory inclusionary housing areas along Queens Boulevard, both utilizing option one and option two. The proposed tax amendment will facilitate the development of a two new mixed-use building with approximately 218 dwelling units, including between 56 and 76 affordable units. Our modifications will remove MIH option two and retain option one within the proposed westerly MIH area. Finally, we will vote to disapprove LUs 632, 633, 634, and 635 for the Lennox Terrace Development Proposal, which includes a zoning map amendment, zoning text amendment, parking special permit, and large-scale special permit. The scale of the proposed project, an effective doubling of the square footage, and 75% increase in height of the existing Lennox Terrace building is inappropriate for its surrounding context, particularly the low to mid-rise residential buildings directly to the 
west and south. In addition, the proposed project would introduce over 1,600 additional dwelling units and generate unmitigated impacts in the area of shadows, open space, construction noise, historic resources, and for pedestrians. The environmental impact study and the environmental impact statement provided no information about a smaller discretionary project with fewer impacts because, according to the FEIS, such a project would not align with the applicant's goals. Instead of a project that, as Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer said in her remarks of February 12th, includes a long-term commitment to housing affordability, greater investment in infrastructure, open space, and schools, the project before us fails to provide the robust infrastructure needed and deserved by this community. It includes no mechanisms to protect residents from temporary burdens such as construction noise or longer-term increases in rent. Here, HPD was willing to partner with the applicant for an Article 11 tax exemption for the existing buildings to remain, which would have capped rent increases for a period of 40 years. Instead, in contrast with some other proposals, an application for an Article 11 tax exemption has not been submitted to the Council during the EULA process, even though conversations with the applicants about the importance of having a, preserva a preservation strategy in place through a tax exemption and regulatory agreement were held as early as July of last year. We heard clear and consistent feedback from residents, neighbors, and community organizations echoing many of these very same issues and stating their opposition on the basis of inappropriate height and density, lack of affordability, unmitigated environmental impacts, and the applicant's poor maintenance of the existing buildings, yet all of these remain unresolved today. Additional. Stakeholders who identified many of these same points included the LT Act, Tenant Association, Community Board 10, the Borough President, the Public Advocate, State Senator Brian Benjamin, Assemblymember Al Taylor, Assemblymember Inez Dickens. Projects like this one must include resources proportional to the densities proposed in order to help create equitable, in order to create equality in the city that it inspires to be. Now, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Yes. Uh, Council Member Diaz. Don't mind. Don't mind. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I just got this today, and I see that the Lennox Terrace project, the one you're asking us to vote against, I see a note here that said Lot 65 has been occupied since 1960 by the Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, what is the relationship with the church and the project? Give me a second, I'll get back to you on that. So I just been informed that the church is an out parcel and is not involved in the project. So the church has no part in the project. It, the church has no part in the project. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Uh, Council Member Rivera. I just wanna uh, thank you all for your support on a couple of applications here. They are for truly affordable housing and Cooper Square Mutual Housing Association, if you look at some of the rents that they're charging, growing families and um, very, very diverse families in our city, um, they are very low and accessible and I am very proud to put these forward and I ask for your support. Thank you so much. All right. And I just want to make a correction uh, for LU6. Okay, so I stand corrected. Um, with that, I also want to recognize that we've been joined by uh, Council Member Grudenchik. Um, I now call for a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and local council members and note that a vote aye on all will be to adopt the following. To approve LU 616, 617, 618, 619, 620, 621, 622, 623, 630, and 640. To approve with modifications, I have described LU 627 and 631, and to disapprove LU 632, 633, 634, and 635. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye or no? Gibson. Permission to explain? 
Councilmember Gibson to explain. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, colleagues. Uh, first, I'm going to be voting aye on all items on today's agenda. I want to congratulate my colleagues who have applications before this committee that provide real affordable housing in the city of New York, and particularly with the item of Lenox Terrace, which we are today voting to disapprove. Um, I want to thank Manhattan Community Board 10 and all of the residents. Uh, I actually heard from some people as well, even though I'm in the Bronx, um, because a lot of what happens in the village of Harlem will deeply impact the Bronx as well. And so we know that while today we are taking a vote and this will go before the full council, I certainly urge uh, Manhattan uh, District 10 and all of my colleagues in Harlem and really all of the residents to uh, not give up or think that you have won the battle. Um, even though this application has been disapproved, I certainly urge you to continue to work with all stakeholders on meaningful development that is in the best interest of all the residents. Um, I think a lot of times developers get creative and they think that while they may have lost one battle, they'll try for another. Um, and uh, we've seen that happen across the city of New York and other places, and I certainly would never want that to happen to all of the good people that live in Lenox Terrace. So um, I thank you for your work. Um, I've saw a lot of emails and just a lot of social media around it, and I know that this was not easy, uh, but this is a testament to what happens when people speak up, uh, when you affirm firm and advocate for you and your families on issues that you know are important, uh, we will be victorious. So while I thank you, I celebrate with you, I tell you don't celebrate too much because the work is not over. I vote aye on all items on today's agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Deutsch. Ku. Aye. Miller. Permission to explain? Councilman Miller to explain his vote. Thank you. I just want to thank the committee and the chair for his leadership, thoughtful leadership on uh, today's package that we are voting on. Uh, obviously, the, the committee did a lot of work and research around this, and, and it's been very thoughtful, and it reflects the needs and the values of uh, New Yorkers throughout the city. Um, and I also want to echo the sentiments of my colleague Gibson from the Bronx that um, we, we uh, greatly value the leadership that the, the members of the, the Village of Harlem have demonstrated on this particular issue and the city is watching. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Reynoso. Richards. Gordenchik. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Diaz. Permission to, permission to explain? Councilmember Diaz explain his vote. Mr. Chairman, uh, knowing that the Metropolitan African Methodist Church, Episcopal Church, has no part in this project, as I've been informed, and knowing that the member of the church and the pastor are not um, an integral part of this project. Therefore, based on that information, I'm voting yes on all. Moya. Aye. Rivera. Aye. By a vote of 12 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted as indicated on today's land use agenda. I would like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. We will leave the roll open for five minutes.